What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and today I want to revisit a tablet from about six months ago. I want to revisit the HP Chromebook X2 and I want to review it for you today and let you know what I think about it. Let's get right into it and let's find out about the HP Chromebook X2. So the HP Chromebook X2, this tablet, again, very, very premium. There's so much to like about this tablet. If you look at the design of it, two USB-C ports, a lot of Android tablets are going to only have one. In fact, I can't think of any Android tablet that has more than one USB-C port. This also has an SD card slot. It also has a fingerprint sensor right here. And it has a really nice aluminum body. It feels very, very premium. Not only that, but this tablet, it comes with a stylus. It comes with a key keyboard and it even comes with this little kickstand case and it makes it very very similar to something like a Surface Pro because you could adjust all the different angles on the tablet and this keyboard it's a detachable keyboard which means that if you want to use this in tablet mode you could use it in tablet mode if you want to use it like a laptop you could use it with this keyboard so there's so much to really like especially for the price now this tablet released at a retail price of six hundred dollars and that's a little bit high right but things have changed over time i've seen this tablet as low as 299 that's a great deal on this tablet i even saw a one day sale at Best Buy where it was down to 250 You have to consider the tablet market out there, something like the Tab S8, for example. I get there's a lot to like about the Tab S8. In fact, I'm going to be talking a lot more about that tablet on my channel, so stay tuned. But that tablet retails at like $700, even if that tablet went on sale. If you had to get the keyboard separately, that would be a big deal. And next thing you know, you're back up to $700 again. Well, this tablet, again, when you see it on sale for 300 bucks and it comes with a keyboard, it comes with a stylus, that makes this tablet a tremendous value. Now we do have to understand that this is a Chrome OS tablet, which means that this device can run Android apps, but it also has a full version of Google Chrome. It's a desktop version of Chrome, so it can run full web extensions, and that's a really big deal to a lot of people. And because this tablet runs Chrome OS, that means that it's going to get updates from Chrome OS, so this tablet is going to get roughly eight years of software software support at least eight years from the time that this device released. So if you buy this in the next year or two, you'll still get seven years of software updates or eight years or six years, depending on when you buy the tablet, but you're still going to get a ton of software support on this tablet. And when you look at the display on this device, again, if I was looking at this device from a $600 lens, a lot of things would be very, very different, but I'm looking at this device from the lens of a $300 tablet that's been on sale like crazy. And if you look at the display. It's a 2K resolution on the display. That's an incredible resolution for this price, but this device again also has a fingerprint sensor, not something that I see from a lot of Chrome OS tablets or even Android tablets for $300. And if you compare this to something like the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, that's a very good tablet that comes with a stylus and all that, but this tablet, in my opinion, it's going to be faster than the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. The screen, again, is going to be a lot nicer than the Tab S6 Lite. That 2K resolution, it looks so, so good. The colors look very accurate on the screen. Now, no, this is not an OLED screen, but it doesn't have to be when the resolution is that good. Honestly, I think the screen is tremendous. It's great for watching videos. Now, keep in mind, this tablet has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. A 3 by 2 aspect ratio, if you don't know what it is, basically some devices are a little wider, some are a little bit taller, and they do that for different reasons. If you're a little bit wider, like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, it's a little better for YouTube videos. But if you're a little bit taller, for example, it's better for scrolling if you're really going to do a lot of productive work. So this device, look, it still looks great for YouTube videos, and the 2K screen is great for those things, but just keep in mind there may be little black bars on your YouTube videos. They're not going to be super big, but you might see those black bars on the edges. But if you're trying to get productive and you're trying to get a lot of work done, that's why I really love that three by two aspect ratio. 
ratio. So I think they made a really good choice with this tablet. Now this screen is super, super bright as well. Again, a lot brighter than a lot of laptops that I see at this price. So I really, really like the screen brightness. I like the colors. I like the resolution. So there's a lot to like, but keep in mind, this does have a 60 Hertz refresh rate. So the screen won't be quite as good as something like a Galaxy Tab S8 because a Galaxy Tab S8 will have a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So the screen will refresh a little faster, but again, that device will cost like twice as much as this device, so do keep that in mind. But if you do look at the performance, and even if you're scrolling around on this device, I don't notice a lot of lag on this device. Now this does have a Snapdragon 7C Gen 1 processor. I do have the version of this tablet with eight gigabytes of RAM. There are some other versions out there, maybe from HP's website that have four gigabytes of RAM. But overall, this tablet is very, very speedy. It's very, very quick. But if you do look at something like a benchmark site, you will find out again, this tablet is not going to be as fast as those higher end Android tablets. It will not be as fast as your Android phone, but Chrome OS is so good at doing more with less. So even if you don't have a blazing fast processor, this tablet is still very, very quick, at least when you're doing your average task. So if you're really looking at Chrome and you have four tabs open, I still think this tablet is going to be very, very fast. If you're opening up different things, doing some different stuff, again, I think this tablet will be fast. And whether you're using it with a keyboard or let's say you detach the keyboard and you're using all the gestures, again, I think this tablet, it feels very, very smooth with the gestures. But if you are trying to overwhelm it a little bit, if you have 12 or 15 tabs, or let's say you open up a video editing program and you want to video edit in 4K, or let's say you want a game and you want to push the gaming experience to the highest level, the highest graphics, those things aren't really going to be possible on this Chromebook. And you have to understand who this Chromebook is geared towards. This is a good Chromebook with a good value. If you want to open up those four or five tabs and get some good basic work done, you want to open up a game and do some light gaming, you want to watch a YouTube video and you want it to look so good, this will be one of the best tablets you're going to find for $300. Just keep in mind though that you're not going to get the performance of a Snapdragon 888. You're not going to get the performance of an iPad or one of the newer Apple devices. And this won't have an i5 processor or one of those blazing fast processors. Instead, you are going to have a processor that's a little restrained, so it's not quite as good for the super intense stuff. But I do think your average person, if you're just web surfing, if you're going around running some Android apps, I do think that you're going to have a pretty good experience overall. Now the speakers on this are pretty good and the battery life on this device is very, very good. It's about eight to 12 hours of battery life, depending on what you're doing on the device. And of course on your brightness and all that. But the bottom line is this is very, very good battery life for a tablet. The stylus experience is pretty good not great. Remember that again, when I say not great, I'm comparing this tablet to like $800 devices. This is a very good stylus experience for the price. If you're comparing this to something like the Tab S6 Lite, for example, I think you'll get a very comparable experience on this device. But of course, if you compare it to a Tab S8, the stylus is going to be a little bit better because the screen will refresh a little bit faster. But other than that, I do think that this stylus is great. I think it's good for taking notes. And I do think it feels very, very nice, at least in my hands when I'm using it. Now let's talk a little bit about the keyboard and the kickstand that this device comes with. When I first reviewed this device, I said the keyboard was awful and I hated it. And honestly, part of the reason for that is expectations. When you have a $600 device, you do have certain expectations with it. But my expectations have dropped significantly when I saw this device go on sale. Because if you don't like the keyboard, who cares? You'll still get a really nice kickstand. You could still use this. You'll get a great tablet and you could buy a good Bluetooth keyboard for like 40 or 50 bucks or even 30 bucks. You could get something like the Logitech K380 and that will do a great job for 30 bucks. Now, if you're going to use this keyboard on a desk, for example, keep in mind this keyboard, it's very, very light. It's very, very thin. It's intended to be very, very portable. So of course the travel won't be quite as good as a more expensive keyboard or as a bigger keyboard. And of course, if you're trying to fit this keyboard on an 11 inch screen, right? Because they want this keyboard to be able to protect the screen whenever you close it. So this keyboard, if it has to fit this 11 inch screen, of course the keyboard is going to be a little bit smaller. So yes, the keys are a little bit crammed, but this is a very good typing experience if you're using this device on a desk. But if you decide to use this on your lap, 
you're gonna realize very quickly that this keyboard is very, very flimsy. If I just sit here right now and do this, you're gonna hear a lot of trackpad clicking. That's because this is so thin that it's so easy to click the trackpad just by resting your palms here or here. If you are trying to type on your lap, you are gonna hear that trackpad noise quite a bit. That's not a huge deal, honestly, if you use a desk most of the time. And honestly, if you really have your expectations in check for this price, it won't be a really big deal. Now there's one other thing I don't like about this tablet, and that's the bugs with the touchscreen keyboard. It's amazing to me that some bugs that I was seeing a long time ago even with the Google Pixel Slate, I'm still seeing on this device. If I'm on something like Twitter or Reddit, it's very specific websites. It's not all websites. It's mainly like Twitter, Reddit, maybe Facebook. If I'm going to type on the keyboard, and let's say I'm replying to someone's comment, if I do press the space bar, it does make the keyboard flash on the screen. Now the keyboard still works. It doesn't cause any weird issues like it used to a few updates ago, but it still flashes on the screen, and that's very, very annoying. This has been a long-standing bug, so on one end, I have no idea when they'll fix it, but on the other end, it's only very select websites, it doesn't happen very often, and you're going to get eight years of software updates with this device, so it's not a big deal because they should, theoretically, fix an issue like that over time. It's just a little disappointing that it's not fixed yet. So there are minor software bugs like that. I haven't seen a lot of them, but Chrome OS, it keeps evolving and improving. We're seeing a new productivity launcher, for example, that's going to be launching very, very soon. Not every Android app is going to work perfectly, but that's okay. Because overall, when I look at this device and I'm revisiting it today, and when I'm thinking about how this device stacks up in the market, overall, this device is really, really Really good, especially, especially if you find it on sale. This is one of the best tablets you're going to find for $300. I'm really thinking of something like the Galaxy Tab A8, for example, that retails for $230. It's barely going to get any software updates on that device. The screen is not going to be that good. And that device is going to be way slower than a device like this. That device doesn't come with the keyboard. It doesn't come with a stylus. So to get all of that in this package, and to find this device for $300. If you see this tablet on sale, I would highly, highly recommend it. Just remember, if you're someone who wants the best of the best, you need to stop looking for devices on sale because then you'll probably buy it and then you'll be discontent if you don't like it. If you're looking for the best tablets out, the Tab S8 is gonna be one of the best portable tablets that you could buy. Now you might wonder if you should buy this over the newer Lenovo Chromebook Duet and I would say it does depend. Remember that there is an 11 inch Chromebook Duet that's gonna be coming out and if you do get the version with eight gigabytes of RAM, I'm guessing that's gonna be over $400. So when you see this for 300, I definitely think it's going to be a better value, at least until that Chromebook Duet goes on sale. And honestly, in my opinion, I think this device is going to be very, very equivalent to that new Lenovo Chromebook Duet. The speed is going to be very, very similar. Even if the Chromebook, the Lenovo Chromebook Duet has a Gen 2 processor, I don't think it's going to be that different from the Gen 1 processor. This has a fingerprint sensor. The Chromebook Duet doesn't. This comes with a stylus. The Chromebook Duet doesn't. So there are pros and cons to both the devices. I think the Chromebook Duet will have a little bit of a sturdier keyboard. But other than that, this does magnetize. The keyboard magnetizes to give you a better angle, right? So this device overall, if I look at it, I think it's very, very equivalent to a lot of these other tablets out there in the Chrome OS market. I think this is one of the best Chrome OS tablets you could buy. I think there are minor issues with it. But when I consider the price, it completely resets my expectations. I see this device and if I see it on sale for 300 bucks, if I see it for 250 even if you see it for 350 I would say this is still a very good tablet to buy if you are a bargain seeker that's looking for a good portable tablet with a lot of software support. So hopefully this review has helped you. Hopefully you like this video. Please give me a like and a sub. I cover a ton of tablets on my channel, Android tablets or Chrome OS tablets. Those are my bread and butter on my channel. So if you liked this video, please give me a sub, give me a like, leave a comment if you have any questions at all, and use my affiliate links. I will say that is one way that I do make money on my channel. So I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week, and I really want to thank you so much for watching my videos.